Now we're going to talk to Helen Glover, two-time Olympic rowing champion who is targeting success again at the Paris Olympics next year. She'd be four, 36, not 46, 36. Uh, it would be her fourth Games, coming out of retirement again to try to compete. Uh, good afternoon, Helen. Thanks for talking to us. I'll get to the how in a minute, but first of all, why? Hi. Why? I guess kind of because I can, you know, I still feel physically able. And I guess in Tokyo, that comeback was all about seeing if it was possible to come back onto the team and have children and balance being an athlete. And now I've answered that question, it's possible, but how good can I be doing it? And I think I've got, I've got a lot more to give, I think. We all think back to London 2012, us on the outside, you on the inside. We had all the hype, all the build up. And then we went a day and another day and another day with no gold. And then finally we got a gold. And it was you with Heather Stanning. You're never going to top that, are you? Why carry on? Well, I think I can top it. I can top it because, you know, I've, I've crossed the finish line and been on my own. And this time, if I cross the finish line, especially if I end up on a podium at all, I've got three little faces in the crowd that I'm doing it for, um, as well as all the parents that I want to represent and all the other children that I want to be a role model for. So I think actually it, it, there is more exciting stuff to come. OK, and are you physically better now, obviously, inevitably you're you're going to be four years old or three years older forgive me the the last olympics in tokyo because of the the covid delay will you be in a a better physical better mental state to compete it's really hard to say i think there's so much that's unknown about women who come back into sport after childbirth and especially when you've got a busy family life at home. But I really think there are so many things that make me stronger. I'm excited to find out those unknowns. I think mentally my strength is even greater than it was probably in London and Rio. Um, but the challenge is probably more in that balance, that recovery. Um, but I think with, with the team that's behind me, I, I, I feel really confident that we can achieve it. So let's talk about the, the how, day in, day out, because you've got a four-year-old and you've got twins. And I can imagine people at home thinking, that is impossible, I'd struggle to cope with two kids, never mind three, including twins, and then compete for the Olympics. How are you going to do it? I honestly think the two make me better. So um, the rowing, I have this outlet that really excites me, that takes me out of the house in the morning and I get to train with my teammates who are all really inspiring and I come home for the afternoon and I'm an energized mum that's got purpose and gets to spend time with the kids and that's the most important job I have is being their mum and then when they've gone to bed the hardest bit of the day is doing that third session often when they've gone to bed but it's something I I have to do it's that daily grind that will get me to the start line in Paris but um yeah it's, it's, it's definitely a balancing act and I would never claim it was easy in Sunday's I really question it, and other days I couldn't be more excited by it. You talk about being an energised mum, are you not just an exhausted mum? I'm exhausted too, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I guess you just learn um, a few tricks and things like that. But um, yeah, it definitely is, is tiring. But it, what it gives you, I think, in the, in the emotional energy um, is, is kind of, it feeds into each other, the motherhood and the, and the rowing as well. How much are the kids aware of what you've done before and what you're hoping to do now? I'm not sure they care that much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that um, maybe when they, in a few months when they see me, hopefully if I get selected for the, for the European Championships, if they can actually see me race, maybe they'll kind of be like, that's why mummy spends so much time on the boring rowing machine and you know kind of put two and two together but right now they just love rolling around in the mud and being carefree and I think that maybe the Olympics is something they'll probably by Paris actually have an understanding of which will be really cool. I don't know why rolling in the round in the mud makes me think of your husband who for people who don't know is Steve Baxchel the adventurer who's done a fair <laughs> bit of uh, per force rolling around in the mud in various parts of the world at various times. He's obviously got a, a massive role to play in supporting you through this. Yeah, not only is he supporting me through it, he's the one who said, oh, I just think you should go back and do this trial um, just before Christmas. He said, you know, I, 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 why not just see if that door's still open for you? So he not only encouraged me to 
try to make the Paris team, but he's obviously just such an essential part of the of the equation. If I'm not there, he's with the kids, and and vice versa. You know, if he's walking out the door, I take over. So um, to have his support is, I mean, I just could not do it without that for sure. The question that applies to all uh, sportswomen who've come back having started a family, but. How do you square the equation? Because for most sports people, you hear them talk, the, the real elite sports people, they say you only succeed if competing is the most important thing in your life, the be-all and end-all. And for you, obviously, I'm assuming it's the second most important thing now. Yeah, this is such an interesting question, I think, because when I was training for London and for Rio, I, that was my mindset. I, I was... All that mattered was rowing. I truly believed that any of my happiness was pinned on my results in London and Rio, and it was my life. Now I, my perspective couldn't be more different. Rowing's a part of my life that I get to do, and I get to leave at the rowing lake. And then I get to do the most important thing that I have, and the most important role I'll ever have. And I never thought I'd see it this way, but I do think it makes me a better athlete. Let me ask you one question. I, I feel guilty even about asking it, but when you're when you're rowing and giving your all for rowing, is, is part of you feeling guilty about not being there for the kids or are you able to compartmentalise? I think there's definitely compartmentalising. Um, when I'm at training, I'm very much there to be professional around my teammates. But also I think the fact that my coaches have given me a brilliant flexibility to make family life come first. You know, tomorrow morning, my four-year-old's got an assembly he's presenting in, and I'm going to be there. There's nothing that would stop me. So I'm going to do my training in my own time at home after it. And if those things weren't possible, if those real important moments weren't possible, I just would not do this. I just wouldn't. I just would choose not to. Um, so while the balance works and while, you know, everything runs smoothly, I, I think I try not to have that typical guilt that you might feel. I feel like I want to be setting good examples, good role modelling, um, and be kind of inspiring for my kids as well. Helen, I can imagine everyone listening wishes you every success in all those compartments of, of your life and may you bring home a medal from Paris if you get it. Thanks for talking to us.